Uh, Don Getters says, does the Wonder situation have greater long-term ripple effect throughout the hobby in terms of making people gun shy on investing heavily in one certain player? I sure hope it does. I just don't think so. We saw this with Tatis, right? Again, totally separate, separate situation. But the thought that, hey, this guy could come out and do something that could severely impact long term his hobby value. Yeah, so we'll go find somebody else. Like, that that didn't change anything. When I say I sure hope it does, I do mean that. I mean because you should be very cautious before investing heavily in any unproven player. Well, that's the, that's a different argument. That but for that's sure. what I mean. But, like, like would, would I go out? Am I more hesitant today to go out and buy a $10,000 Aaron Rodgers rookie because of the Wander thing? No. Is it possible that we find out in, a, in six months when Aaron Rodgers does some heinous crime? Sure. Sure. I, I'm playing the odds. Oh, it's not going to happen. But like, I do think there's a difference between putting all your eggs in one basket with one player versus spreading that out among many prospect players. In this case, in your scenario of putting 10000 into Aaron Judge, I do think there's a difference. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rod oh, you said Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, let's say. Scrub the audio. No, no, no. I think in this situation, Aaron, say it is Aaron Judge, though. Would you not think that there's an issue? Why can't we use Aaron Rodgers? Because Aaron Aaron Rodgers is an established player. So is Aaron Judge. He won an MVP. Aaron, I know, but he's, he's still not a Hall like of a Fame. Lot of, yeah, yeah, there's a lot almost, more time. Uh, Pick a better example. No, now it, now it doesn't matter. Now there's been too much confusion. Into Aaron it. Eckhart, the movie producer. <laughs> we could invest in him. Aaron, Aaron Eckhart, the movie. Oh, producer? the actor. Aaron yeah, Spelling. We can invest in Aaron Spelling. Don't you? I won't talk sports. You don't talk actors. How about that? Aaron we'll Weber, comedian. Uh, yeah. While well, he was on the podcast, Chris so Weber, basketball player. Don Getters, thank you so much for your question. Chris Perry, personal friend. Mike Thompson wants to know the band Perry. <laughs> when th <laughs> the, I'm telling you, if I don't bring yep. the drugs next time, good, healthy pharmaceutical. Don't drugs. tease me with a good time, bro. When thinking long term PC type cards. If something is hot right now, say he says showy rookie cards hot. or Adley Wit, does it make sense to move it while high or keep long term and wait for more value in the end? With those examples, uh, Adley and Bobby Witt, for example, let's go with those two. Both very young, super unproven. Spencer Torkelson, I'd put in the mix. These three guys have been unbelievable, especially Witt and Torkelson. Torkelson had two more home runs last night, by the way. I love these forgotten guys coming back and having great second halves. Okay. Witt, Torkelson, Adley, uh, very talented, a lot of hype. Most, um, my sound sounds jacked. Maybe because I'm just yelling into this thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you got a brain thing going on, hey, bro. Jesse, don't worry about it. Don't you make so jokes. <laughs> With guys like that, if I see the opportunity to cash out at what I think is a high, I'm out. Is it possible that in seven years we're looking at Adley and, hey, dude, this guy's Buster Posey. He's unbelievable. You know, Torkelson is just amazing. Sure. But I just think at, there are some instances where I, I want the sure thing. Yeah. I can cash out at X amount, and I don't care that it's PC. Go buy another PC of a, of a proven guy. I'm not saying just cash out and do the flip, cash out, flip. Take your winnings and, and go buy something you want to uphold that, that's an established thing. But for me, long term right now, I am very, there's not a single player. Oh, let me think about this. My statement was going to be there's not a single active player that I'm holding long term. Oh, well, you can't make that because there's so many players that are already so close to the end anyway. It might be true with me, though. I'm trying to think of an active player that I'm holding long term no matter what in the box. Patty Mahomes, that's, that's the only example I have. Everybody else in that box is retired you know, dead, whatever. But like that, okay, even in baseball, like a trout, you don't think that... I don't have those, I'm saying. I'm saying for me. Oh, but for your own personal collection. But there okay. comes a point, though, where... But there are players, though. Sure. It gets to that point with me where there's a guy, not Aaron Judge, but Aaron Rodgers. You've heard of him. Heard of him. I want somebody... I want... The, the answer to this question has to be yes. If they die tomorrow, retire tomorrow, never play again tomorrow, are they Hall of Famers? If the answer is a clear yes, a clear yes, sure. Judge is not a clear yes. I don't, I don't think Judge is a Hall of Famer right now. I can't imagine he is with his stats. Maybe he's close. What doesn't matter. Aaron Rodgers is a first ballot guy tomorrow. Mike mm -hmm. Trout is a first ballot guy tomorrow. If that's the status, I'm okay with the long term hold. If the answer is questionable or no, I'm always just of the mindset of there's time to do what I want with it. Let me flip. Let me make a little bit of money off that younger guy and go get a card and come and I can circle back if I need to. But, yeah, I just, I'm very hesitant about anything long-term. And I've held some huge Wander cards in my life. I've held some massive Julios. Uh, even Mahomes early on had some big stuff, and it was like, yeah, but, okay, great, he has a Super Bowl. 
not a Hall of Famer. He is now, so that's a little different. But but this I, all relates to current players, people who are currently playing. Current players. So like he yeah. says, so so in general, my rule would be everybody who is not a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer, I'm taking the win when I can get it. Okay. Even on PC stuff, I just think history has shown us there's going to be so many ups and downs, hips and dips and whatever else. That is the thing. I don't know what player you could go and point to. I'm sure there might be Even one. Otani, by the way. There's always one that proves the rule, but think about how many cards you've seen on card letter or whatever that spike and inevitably, even if it doesn't come all the way down, comes down to where you could have sold it at the top, bought back in at the bottom. 100%. Including, by the way, Mahomes and all the guys we've mentioned. Like, yeah. Look at guys a year and a half ago. Ridiculous. Yeah, the, I think it's okay. very few I, and far between. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, now, I don't know, like the Ellie, though, like it does make me wonder if you ever see that come down. See, but... but it will event, I think, at some point. But it's also yeah. possible. He's you're you're up sevenfold right now on your stuff. Is it possible that, that seven becomes an eleven x if they make the playoffs and he has a walk off? Sure. But again, to me, it's like, well, let me let me just take the win. Yeah, for sure. I I guess in this situation, it is so dependent on the player. But in nine times out of ten, you're probably. I would rather just be cautious. Yeah. At least nine times out of ten. Yeah, think of the guys we've seen with crazy speed. Julio Rodriguez. Yeah. Who last year was like, well, Julio's going to... Funny enough, Julio was actually picking it up recently, and that team's right on the verge of the playoffs. But even still, the last four or five months, you could have sold him mm -hmm. almost any time higher than he is today, and that would have won. And then if you're a Julio guy, fine. Sell a card for $300 when he's hot. Go back and buy it a month later, three months later for $200, and then you want to keep it? Yeah. I don't care. Your, your, your value is way lower. I think the... In my mind, I keep going back to like the idea of doing this with like the cautious, uh, the cautiousness you need to have with investing in any active player. But the situation with Wander, it didn't matter. It wouldn't matter if he was active. He had been in the Hall of Fame. Correct. He'd been retired. The specific situation he's in, you're going to have an effect on the card price if it turns out to be true. The overall issue that I have is investing heavily in anybody who's active, who has not solidified their space as a Hall of Famer. Sure. And just assuming that I, you know, I made a great investment years ago that this guy I've held for however long and he is now up 5X from wherever it was, that does not mean that you necessarily made a great investment if he is still playing because there's still so much opportunity for you to go down. By the way, the only other thing I'll add to this too, I bought my, I've talked about this before, I bought my Larry Bird PSA 8 rookie for $792. There was a time that was about a seven to $8,000 card. Yeah. I still didn't sell it because I still just wanted the card. Yeah. And, and there comes a point where I'm like, well, even though this is an all-time high, it's probably going to come down, but what if it doesn't? And then I don't get to buy the card again. Yeah. So I think there's a balance there with that also.